I like to make things and I find that when I'm not making things, I go a little crazy. So I was always the person that would go to the bar in my 20s with a crochet hook and yarn. And everyone thought that was <laughs> very weird and I'm still that person. I don't leave home without embroidery or crochet or something to work my use my hands. It's like something that really grounds me and I just love making things. So I'm always kind of trying to like up my game and learn a new technique or a new thing or a new way to repurpose or reuse something. I love working with a New England palette in general, but I love making something beginning to end that's from Somerville. Like that's from my neighborhood, like stuff I find on my walk or um, and sometimes I just use it like as bits and bobs in, in sewing or like decoration or hanging from a bottle and sometimes I use them as dye stuff and I just think that's really cool. So like this panel right here is all found object dyeing. So nothing here was purchased. Everything was recycled and reused. And I thought that, and I actually have like six or seven of those panels and I will one day make it into a nice quilt for my house, but I haven't yet. You know, from, I mean, obviously you're enthusiastic about it. So would you say that the making is really important for your emotional well-being, your mental health? I think I would go totally insane if I didn't make things, yeah. Mm. And why do you think, why is, what is that connection about? Um, it brings me joy. Like I like, like I love, look, I like this, I could, I, I think I could explain it better if I use like an object to explain yeah. it. So like this bottle, like I loved this bottle. I've had this bottle forever and ever and ever, but it was just like a little bottle that was kind of on my shelf and now I can really enjoy it. Cause I like made a little like cozy for it and it makes rainbows in the window and I can put flowers in it or I can just like look at it and I, I it really brings me joy. And instead of like getting thrown away or um, not being appreciated, now I can really appreciate it. And I love, I really love when I find an article of clothing that I can kind of make better, right? Like is, there's so, when you go to the thrift store for some weirdo reason, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of white or beige or pale colored, kind of uh, sometimes brand new, sometimes in states of disrepair that you can repurpose and reuse. Like you can wear it as is, or you could mend the hole in it, or I could throw it in a dye bath, or I could throw it in the compost. Um, where I live in Somerville, we have a lot of black walnut trees. So I'm always like using those black walnuts as dye stuff. And um, I'm also an herbalist, so I use the black walnuts as I put them in an oil and I've made a tincture from them. So it's, there's, there's like such a bigger relationship around not, the, not just the end product, but like the relationship between me and the tree and me driving on that road all the time and seeing the tree and how many walnuts fell that year. Because I can actually, because I visited the tree so much, I know, I'm like, oh, there's not, it's not that many black walnuts this year. What's going on? Like, there's something about kind of the, the cycle of life with plants. I think it really, in the end, as I'm going down this long road talking about this stuff, and I know this glass bottle has nothing to do with plants, but I, I think I always come back to plants. So I used to work at a growing grounds in Los Angeles where we sold like um, wholesale plants to landscape artists, architects and stuff like that. It was five acres in the high desert and I just love working with plants. And so I've been to herbalism school. I just, I think a lot of the, the, a lot of the constituents that give you color on fiber are the same constituents that are the medicine in herbalism or the healing properties of the plant in herbalism. You're not allowed to say medicine in the United States. Um, and so I think that's really what it comes down to for me is the, is the, is our, my relationship to plants and growing things. And, nat and nature itself, really, isn't it? And the, the yeah. cycle of life. Um, I mean, and I honestly often think, too, like, these are all freaking sand. That's, like, so crazy to me. Mm, bottles, yes. Yeah. Mm, class. And that makes me sad, too, because there, you know, there's a lot of sand excavation. Like, even if you, you should always use recycled glass, it makes me crazy. Because we lived in a place in India where they steal sand. They're sand thieves. So they're ruining the river 
because they come down at night and they steal truckloads of sand. Mm -hmm. So it's completely shifted where we used to live, the river there. And that's, you know, for construction, for concrete, for probably making glass, I don't know. So just returning to your wardrobe then, being hands-on there, how, how is that of, of benefit to you in terms of what you wear, the opportunity to wear, the opportunity to um, get your hands on and be creating something original? How does all that um, influence the way you wear clothes? Okay, well, there's a couple things. One is I really love clothes. <laughs> New, old, used, expensive, cheap. I like love I do love, not necessarily fashion, but there's certain things I just really love. Um, and it's kind of multifold for me because I really love things that my friends have made or patterns that my friends have made. It like brings me a little bit more joy. So I have a really good friend named Cal Patch who is a great mending teacher and seamstress. And she has basically dedicated her life to teaching people how to make clothes that fit their own bodies. So she teaches these like pattern drafting classes. She has a great book and she has lots of classes online. If you could take a class from her in person, I totally recommend it. She, she's like a life-changing person. Um, I got to meet her. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did? You met her? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> she's like one of my, I love her so much. She's one of my best. I mean, I love her so much. She's mm. amazing and she's such an inspiration and she's such a great support person. And so, like, for instance, if I wear something I made with her, um, which I have a few things I've made in her classes, I, I always think of her, and that makes me really happy. And if I wear a dress that she made, which I usually wear them until they're not wearable anymore because they're just like a rag by the time I'm done with them, I also feel very good. And then um, she really shifted the way a lot of people think about their wardrobe and their bodies. So there's not just that aspect of um, reuse, re recycle, repurpose. There's that aspect of like love your own body and who you are because we're all very different and not every pattern is going to fit us. Sonia Phillip, like she's another person who's made some really great patterns. She I met her too. Mm -hmm. She took a class from Cal. Mm. So that's what inspired her to do this whole amazing clothing line. Mm. I mean, probably not 100%, but I think she would also say she was really inspired and she herself has changed so many people's lives because she made these amazing patterns like these dresses and these pants and all these things that like they look good on everybody. Also Sonia's crazy because she she wears so many amazing prints and patterns and she always looks so good in everything she she puts together. It's it's so inspirational like it's, my strong point is is like I'm a a really good people person I really love people I really love talking to people I love teaching people how to do things but like I'm not good at being like you do this and then you do that and then you do this and then you get that I'm like let's see how it feels and it's, mm. yes I'm tactile mm. um, I have this really funny thing happening now which is that our daughter is finally like going through all my clothes and wearing all my clothes. So it's kind of cute to see the things I wore, you know, 25 years ago, my, our daughter is wearing, it's just really sweet. Um, you know, the only place to find something secondhand besides like the thrift store or the flea market um, was eBay. And eBay has only really been around since like 98 or 99 or something like that. and. Now there's like a million reseller websites. So you can get like your favorite pair. You don't have to just find a pair of shoes from like 1975. You can find a basically brand new pair or gently worn pair of amazing, beautiful, well-made shoes on Poshmark or Mercari or Depop or any of these places. So it's a little bit like, now I'm really on a tangent, but it's a little bit like when people say they they don't want to adopt a dog because they have allergies, which is like, that's not really true because there's millions of dogs that you can adopt that have hair and it's not fur. You know what I'm saying? So so we don't need any new clothes for a long time. Really nobody producing. Nobody needs to go. To be producing more clothes. We don't. And I, I draw the, I do say that I feel like it's okay to buy a dress from someone like Cal or Sonia or Judy or any of those kinds of people because I feel like they're really working hard to be ethical about what they make and they make really functional clothes. Um, but no, 
I don't, I don't, I don't think. Mm. I think it's, I think it's harder for men to find secondhand clothes. And I do think like humanity's gotten taller and bigger, like their feet are bigger and that kind of thing. And that can, cause I'm married to a person who's like really a giant. So he just for the first time ever in our whole togetherness has never, I've never been able to find him a hat. And he just found one in Krakow because mm. he was at a conference. And someone made, it was a, you know, a handmade hat. So I was like, oh my God, you finally got a hat. Because we would never find one secondhand. I look and look and look. I've never found one. So there are some kind of exceptions <laughs> to the rule. But even then, you should be thoughtful about it. I kind of think if you're getting, if you're, the big thing is like, if you're going to buy something new, like that you just really feel like, I got to get this blah, blah, blah. Because like even a wedding dress you don't need to buy new. You should, I think a huge thing is the textile industry is the real thing that no one thinks about. I think cotton's the third largest polluter in China. Like it's, it's a bad industry. Like where, the, when you go buy fabric, like when I go buy like my muslin, where's it coming from? Who's making it? So you should like make sure it's Ovotech certified and just be more thoughtful about what you, if you're gonna get something new, you should think about it. I think it's hard for people to look different. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't think you have to look different to wear secondhand clothes, but I think it's harder to to find a more kind of basic look that fits you. That's you know what I mean. Everyone feels a little funny about secondhand, and so for me, it's like normal. Like I've been going to the flea market since I was little, but I do hear that a lot from people. Or like there's people who are like, oh, I would never wear secondhand shoes. That's gross. And you're like, well, actually, no. Like you can get some really great. I think it's about changing the narrative around what people think. And I also think the huge component about that is getting your own hands in it and making things and doing things because then you can see. So like when you look at all those clothes, it's soul crushing when you realize somebody made all of those clothes. When I walk into Target and I see that there's crocheted baby clothing or kids clothing or adult crocheted there was just there just that just happened to me I saw an adult crocheted dress and I was like because there's no machine for crochet mm -hmm. like somebody had to sit and and make that and that breaks my heart because it, it's every time I see a doily at the thrift store I'm like oh my god that's a doily that belongs <laughs> somebody made that it took so long these take forever mm -hmm. it's not fast you have to embrace the relationship we you have with the objects you're working with and works and be happy with slow slow is actually good yeah, yeah good for us yeah yeah it's so great when you complete something i mean every single one of these bottles the second i was done with them i'm like look how beautiful they are i'm kind of like in love with them and i i don't want to i don't know what to do with them because i love them so much enjoy them yeah uh what else is god it really got dark it's gonna rain or something